Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I want to kick off this first episode covering Azure Container Apps and how to use them with Mass Transit. So Azure Container Apps is a new thing within Azure. It's only available in a certain number of regions, but it makes it really easy to build container-based applications, scale them based on HTTP or, hey, Azure Service Bus, and you can scale to zero. So the, it's a consumption-based pricing model. The scaling rules are super easy to set up. And you know, I've started literally using this less than three hours ago, and I already have code up and running in Azure. So I want to kind of walk through this. This is going to be a multi-part series. I want to keep it to a reasonable length. Uh, so this one is really just going to talk about the very basic setup. And I'll link the getting started with Azure container apps uh, in the bottom text below the video. Uh, and I'll also link the sample code, which has the sample repo that I built that I currently have up and running and I'm using for this demo. So let's kind of jump in. So Azure has a number of docs on the Azure uh, Container Apps documentation. There's a whole bunch of getting started here. You can see the link in there. If not, it's down below. I followed this code on your local machine approach. And this was all a bunch of command line steps to like log into Azure, upgrade the tools, install the extensions, define all these variables to make it easy to repeat these commands. You know, I put it in US Central, uh, I set up a separate environment, and I walked through all these steps, created my repo, I'll set you through all of this. You can fork my repo and change it, use it however you want, why not, right? Um, so that's what we got started with. And what I end up with is a resource group in Azure. You can see that the, uh, well, I don't know if you can actually see that, but, you can see that I have a resource group in Azure. The uh, number of things are created. A container apps environment is created. I created a service bus namespace for this because I want to use service bus. I can trade it a container registry and I'm publishing from GitHub straight into that Azure container registry. I have the container app that I've created so far, which is my sample container app. There's going to be more. This is just the first one. And I created a log analytics workspace so I can kind of see the logs. So within the sample container app, we can see that it's a certain resource group. It has a URL. Uh, what, what images am I using? What's my ingress? All of these things you can set up. So I'm accepting traffic from anywhere. I have a target port that gets mapped. So I get nice SSL at the front end. All that stuff is handled. Um, I have secrets in here for connection to Azure Service Bus. All this stuff you can kind of read through. And, and the nice thing about this is once you get through the deploy, there are how-to guides of like everything, like manage secrets, scale an app. And I'll go through some of these command lines at another time. I'm not gonna walk through every one of these because honestly, I just literally copied, changed the variables and pasted it in. And you can look at the GitHub repo that I have to kind of see the results of all of that. So with this container app set up, I've taken some of my previous examples and I'm sticking with the submit order example. And in this case, I'm gonna hit that URL and I'm gonna post an order with a GUID. So when I hit send, you can see I'm sending the request and wow, it's really slow. So why is it so slow? We'll get to that. One of the cool features that you get with Azure Container Apps is scale to zero. So you can literally scale to dead just like Azure Functions and not be paying a dime when you aren't processing. So I have an HTTP scale rule set up in here when under scale, where I'm basically saying if there's no triggers, I want to scale down to zero. And if there's more than 10, I want to scale up those replicas. So pretty cool. It goes off connection count. And now I created that order ID. Another thing that that sample sets up is access to log analytics. So if I do a quick run, I can see that just seconds ago, because the application had shut down on me because it went scaled to zero. But when I hit that line, boom, it fired it up. It started an entrance. You can see Mass Transit is logging a consumer for that submit order message. <coughs> the application is up and running. And then posting my reproduction, all those logs, boom, bus has started. Everything is great. I'm not logging any messages out of the consumers at this point. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I'm actually just getting over COVID, so that's why there weren't any videos for the last couple of weeks.
So now if we go back into Postman, we'll see that subsequent requests are gonna come right back. And those are actually doing message dispatches over Azure Service Bus. So nothing super exciting to see there. It's a very basic app. I'll walk you through that in the code. Um, this is very much similar to some of the test apps I've created where I have an order controller. It has a get to get the order and it has a post. The post is the only method I'm using right now. And you can see I'm using the request client to get a response and uh, handle that back. Within the program, I just use a simple handler for now because I'm gonna add the consumer as a separate container in a subsequent episode so that we'll be able to show how the different scaling rules work. I'm using the kebab case formatter. I'm pulling the connection string from the configuration. And that's actually pulling from a secret inside my container app. So if I go look at secrets, I can see that I have my service bus connection string as a secret, and I'm actually plugging that into an environment variable that then gets pulled into my container, just like you would do with Kubernetes. So it's using Kubernetes under the hood. It's just, this is a super simplified version of it. So pretty cool, I think. Um, so yeah, so back in here, all I'm just doing is a configuration .get connection string service bus. In this case, I'm using the session ID formatter for that. I didn't create <clears throat> uh, session requirements on here yet, but I just wanted to have that on there because I'm gonna need that for every one of my message types in subsequent episodes where I talk about doing sagas with sessions. So again, just a teaser on that of what's gonna be to come. I don't think my environment is development, so I probably can't get to the Swagger endpoint. Um, I've never actually tried. I don't think I have the address listed here. So yeah, so I'm not gonna do that. But if I wanna go back and look at those logs, I can do a quick refresh on the logs, see if it actually scaled down, or since I just did a couple requests, it's probably still running. So yeah, you can see 131. Oh, it actually stopped in the time I was talking, it said 131 when it had stopped, and now it kicked back up again at 135. So yeah, pretty cool. You know, the, the, the scaling numbers there are great. And again, you're only charged for when your service is actually up and running. So pretty cool stuff. Again, a very basic, simple project here. I have some contracts fleshed out from another project. I have a very simple Docker file where I'm just building it and deploying and setting the environment for port 5000, which is I'm doing that expose 5000, which is then used by the container app to map 443 and 80 to that automatically. And that is set up in the ingress section where it's like, here's my ingress, it's enabled, I want traffic from anywhere, and it's going to port 5000. Uh, beyond that, it's just a simple controller. It's a bare API project. I left the weather forecast controller in there. I'll probably take that out with the next revision. Uh, app settings is pretty empty. I do have my, for testing locally, I have the connection string in my app settings development that I use. So that's a, a thing. Order is a simple model. We'll probably richen this up as the sample goes, but it doesn't need to be super complex for this demo. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, pretty basic setup. That's kind of the main intro I wanted to get through. I want to keep these in episodes kind of small and digestible. Um, the code is up on GitHub, sample container apps. Uh, you can see the actions that it actually deploys and does all the work. You can check all that stuff out. Um, very, very simple project. Um, like I said, it took me less than a couple hours to just get the initial build out there and up and running. A few tweaks to add Azure Service Bus. And yeah, I, I'm pretty stoked. I like the scaling. I like the model of being able to scale by HTTP, but also scale by um, queue depth or number of messages in queues. So that's something else that I'm gonna look at is how we can you know, in, in the later episode, we're gonna add another container to the build. We're gonna do two deploys, and we're going to actually see the, the service container that handles the messages separately from the API container scale based on queue depth rather than API activity. So that's kind of just, you know, table of contents type stuff of what's gonna be coming. I wanted to get this first episode out just to really kind of let you know what's coming and kind of set the stage and i'm pretty excited about it it's pretty cool stuff so again check the links below the sample the um, documentation for azure container apps and uh, stay tuned for episodes here in the near future